So up until the point in class, we've been talking about electric potentials, the amount of energy stored for each unit charge. Well, in this lab activity, we're gonna be mapping what the electric potential looks like around different charge distributions. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to take conductors, uh, pieces of aluminum, and we're gonna, let's say, put a net positive charge on one and a net negative charge on the other. And so if there's a tiny little positive charge placed anywhere around, let's say, the negative charge and the positive charge, it's gonna some, have some amount of electric potential energy. And based on each unit charge, it's gonna be at a specific electric potential. It's gonna have so many joules of energy for each coulomb of charge. Well, we just wanna get a general sense of what the, the map of the electric potential looks like, in this case, around a positively charged uh, line of metal and let's say a negatively charged point charge. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a power supply to actually give this a net positive charge and this a net negative charge. Uh, right here, this is actually the voltage of the power supply, the difference between what's connected to the black terminal and what's connected to the red terminal. So I've got a wire connected here. So with this power supply on, there's a 17.18 volt difference between the positive and what's connected to the negative side. Um, I'm just gonna actually adjust this up to 18 volts since that's the electric potential difference we're gonna use in the lab between the positively charged thing and the negatively charged thing. We'll get as close as we can, use our little fine adjustment right there, okay? And so this power supply is saying that basically this is at 18 joules per coulomb or 18 volts, and this would be at zero volts. Well, we need a way to experimentally measure what the difference is just to verify that and go through, I guess, in the space between these two charges to figure out what the electric potential is uh, at different grid points. So we're gonna use this. This is a multimeter and it can measure lots of different things. The thing we're gonna use this for in this lab though is to measure the electric potential difference. This is a potential difference meter. It measures the electric potential difference between whatever is connected to the black terminal and whatever is connected to the red terminal. So I've got the black terminal connected all the way over here to our zero volt thing, the negatively charged point charge. And I've got the red terminal connected to this. And if I bring this over here, and touch the red, uh, there is no potential difference between the black wire and the red wire because they're touching the same thing, right? If I come over here and touch this piece of metal, notice this, this was saying there's an 18 volt difference between what I'm touching with the red and what the black wire is actually touching. Um, if I come over here and somewhere in the middle, there's actually, uh, water between the two right here, so uh, we can set up potential difference in the space around here. So if I just put this, let's say, column 13, row 10, kind of like right in the middle there, you can see that our potential difference meter says 10.6 or 10.5 volts. That means the electric potential at that location in between those two charges, the positively charged plate and the negatively charged point charge, is approximately here we go. I think it was what, like 10.5, 10.6? Now it's saying about 10.4. Okay, it's gonna vary just a little bit. But we don't wanna get a sense of not just the electric potential here and the electric potential there. We wanna know what it looks like all kind of throughout this region in a two-dimensional mm -hmm. slice, basically in the water here. For data collection, each lab group is gonna look at a different type of charge distribution and you're gonna be collecting data either together in class, or you're gonna be looking at one of the four different videos to figure out what's going on with the electric potential around these different charge distributions. In data collection video number one, we're gonna have a point charge at a high potential, a high electric potential, and this metal plate at a low electric potential. So this can be at 18 volts, this will be at zero volts. In the data collection video number two, we're gonna have the metal plate on the left, that's gonna be at high potential, and the point charge is gonna be at a low potential. In data collection video number three, we're gonna have two different point charges, one at a high potential, one at a low potential. And in the fourth data collection video, we're gonna have two plates, one at a high potential and one at a low potential. 
these data collection videos will be linked in the video description below. When you're collecting data, you're going to be filling out a grid that looks something like this. And again, this will also be linked in the video description. In the video, I'm going to be placing the red wire of the potential difference meter at different grid locations. And there's a whole bunch of different grid locations, but we don't have to fill out every single one or collect data on every single one. You do need to collect electric potentials at each of the gray boxes. And so you're going to be collecting data for the entire perimeter and the data collection videos give you an opportunity to do that. And then you're only going to be collecting data in every other column. So let's say column three, column five, and column seven, but only every other row. We're going to be getting a sampling of data all throughout the region like this. Now, if you're assigned data collection video number one, one point charge and one plate on your grid, I would suggest drawing where the high potential object is placed, the high voltage object, and where the low voltage object is placed, and then go through and collect all of that data. Here's what it looks like for each lab group. And so if you're lab group A, you're going to be doing video number one, which is a point charge and metal plate. Lab group B, a metal plate at high potential and a point charge at low potential. That's video two. Group C and D will both be doing point charges, one at high potential, one at low potential. That's video number three. And then groups E and F will be doing video number four. Or if you're doing it in class, you're going to have one metal plate at high potential, another metal plate at low potential. And just so that you know, the convention, and this is the way that it is in the data collection videos, we connect the red wire to a high potential and the black wire to the low potential side.